This house was built in 1907 by F. E. Houghton, and he came with the land rush of 1889. He and his first wife built a house that was on the east side of this house, and they moved in and had four children, and she died. And he remarried, and his second wife had two more children right next door. And then they amassed this huge fortune in the Oklahoma Territory. He had the very first cotton gin in Oklahoma. He was the founder of Cotton Oil Company, and he had three mercantile stores, eight grocery stores, and the first car dealership. Wow. So they were vastly wealthy. And in its time, this was the most expensive house built in Guthrie. It cost $11,900. Wow. wow. That was a lot of money then. The average house was being built between $800 and $1,200. So this was 10 times more expensive. And they moved into this house in 1907, the year of slavery, and proceeded to have six more children. Come in here, maybe. Somebody's smoking a cigarette. And they'll, they'll see sometimes smoke curling to the ceiling from right around that area over there. And it's not fireplace smoke, you know, it's, and it smells pungent like an old cigar or a pipe. When I lived here, I lived here until 96, I lived here for 10 years, I heard a lot of interesting things at night. Footsteps would come up to the third floor, the door would open, the door would close, there would be nobody there. We were later to find out that that was the, the children, the Hope children, there were still some of them alive when I bought this house and they had a little family reunion. And they told me that that's where they used to, when their parents were going, they would sneak up to the third floor and play. And so it's almost like a repetitive thing. About 10 o'clock at night, you hear little footsteps, the door opens, door closes, nobody there. In 1907, there was some other record that they found that she went down and died in town. Probably a coping call. And in those days, they were treating coping call with codeine laced concert coating and opium. And children died as a result of um, being over medicated. That's what happened to this child. She was over medicated. And then killed in the house. And supposedly she haunts the stuff like that. the Stone Lion Inn when I was 13 years old and my mother started the first bed and breakfast in Oklahoma. Um, one Thanksgiving about five years ago, uh, everybody had left to go grocery shopping and get stuff for Thanksgiving dinner and I was staying here and making the turkeys and so I had gotten up at five that morning to stuff the turkeys and put them in the oven and I came into this room and uh, had about an hour uh, before I had to check the turkeys again, and so I lay down on this couch, and I got up and closed the door, um, and I heard it open again, and I got up, and I figured that it may have just, I didn't close it well enough, um, so I made sure that I had closed the door, and I rattled the handle uh, to make sure it was closed, and uh, the door flew open again for the third time, this time somewhat violently, and hit actually the, the buffet that was behind the door. Um, at the time, the thing that, that was unsettling for me is I've, I've uh, got a doctor's degree and so I generally think uh, in terms of being a rational, comprehensive type person and look for alternative explanations for things uh, that are not paranormal. Um, old houses, you know, are kind of creepy and, and creepy uh, and so I was trying to figure out what would, would cause the door to do it. So I went through the house and looked at all, made sure all the windows, it was a, a calm day, a calm fall day. Um, the air was not on, the heaters were not on, and there were no windows or anything like that open. And so I can't come up with any uh, sort of normal explanation for why the door would open three times um, after I'd shut it. Like I said, the first time I thought I just didn't get it latched tightly enough. And so that's, that's probably why. If you, if you don't close it fully, it will kind of swing open on its own. Um, but that's the experience that I had in this home. You know what? This is the room that the guests tell me. This is one of the active rooms. That has the most activity in it. Yeah. And this See, is this the bed one. used to be in Kentucky Daisy. 
And every time we make this bed, we are they get, following the bed? This one, because every time you make this bed, it always like somebody laying in it. And then we wow. used to be in Kentucky Daisy, and I used to go down there and complain to Greg Becky about Grant. And Greg used to say, Michelle, I'm not laying in the bedroom up there. And then every time I make a bed, like somebody came back and lay down on top of it. You know, the couple of times Paula made the bed over in the Irish room mm -hmm. in the house. And there was a couple of times that she came in the house and she said, somebody's been laying on my bed. And I'm going, why mm -hmm. the hell would anybody be laying on a bed in the Irish room? And then when we moved the bed in here, it started doing it in here. Instead of laying down, it's like somebody sitting on the bed. Well, you know, this is the room that John and Phyllis always stay in. And this is one of the rooms everybody felt like someone touching them. Yeah, mm -hmm. playing with their hair, mm -hmm. that kind of thing, yeah. That's what I hear. Yeah, and this and sometimes this would be one of the rooms if we have a murder dinner, and we had to turn on all the lights and had to come back and cut them off. I would not come in here. Sometimes I just leave the light on until the next day <laughs> because it's so eerie coming back from out of there. And I, there used to be a bed right here, and uh, one night I come up here to go to bed. And I like the doors as I come up. I like the downstairs door. I like that door. I'm in the bed. Sometime in the middle of the night, somebody got in the bed with me. It was very eerie too, because you can actually feel the pressure of someone leaning against my back. But I know where nobody could have came in at that time because I had already locked the two doors. So I laid there the whole night with my head covered and I never stayed here again. I, if someone actually, you felt somebody present in the bed with me. You know. That cradle used to be in the room downstairs, and we used to have dolls in there. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, you have to kind of neatly put the doors back in place and everything. And every now and then, after I leave that room, sometime after a few minutes, good 15, 20 minutes, I might go back, check on something, the door would be moved. Mm -hmm. So I used to go downstairs and say, Beck, can you talk to the boys for me, please? I don't want to keep picking up behind them. I used to accuse the boys of moving the dolls, and she kept saying, talking to the boys, asking that they did, and they kept saying they wasn't. And I really thought it was the boys doing it. So eventually she just brought the bed up and took the dolls out. Then she turned around and put it down in the wedding suite. It's all scary, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they would actually be moved. Somebody would actually move them, and I'm like, I'm so tired of them. Every time I come up, how can we put these dolls back? And I'm like, what these boys want to play with dolls for? <laughs> but yeah, they used to, I used to think they were doing it to me, but I found them doing it. No, I, t I told Becky, I've been over here late at night. Remember, uh, I won't do it. When the window got broken, yeah. and she was out of town, and me and Kelly were over here. Mm -hmm. Well, I stayed after the police left, you know, to make sure just for a few minutes, and I had to lock everything up, and I'm thinking, Okay, if this is if it's gonna happen, now's gonna be the perfect time mm -hmm. because I'm in this damn house by myself. I got zip. Apparently, the ghosts don't like me, <laughs> which suits me just fine. Thank you very much. You know, if I leave some here, I don't come back for it. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't care what it is. I'm not coming in this house <laughs> And did you have any kind of an experience? I, I did, and I, I hadn't thought of it when I first came in, but until late that evening, yesterday evening, and uh, every time I went to the bathroom, it, I would, you know, when you you like get a twitch or something, you go like this. But it, it would happen every time in the same spot. It's like something was rubbing it or... Rubbing it in the back. Touching it, yeah. That's very interesting. Did it scare I wouldn't you? make this up. No. Did you, what did you think it was? I didn't know. Was it like a hand or something? It was more like just a touch. I don't think it felt like an animal or anything, but it just felt like a touch. But it was just like right here. Like a human touch. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, well, thank you for sharing this. Have you ever looked at the stone lion in? Yes, okay. we've been there twice. What has happened there? Um, we got we got a couple of EVPs through our FM sweep on our RT EVP. We actually got a couple of names. Um, we also got this organ music that was playing. Organ. That was weird, almost like you were at a funeral, but it was through the FM sweep and having that play, and it, it played for a while.
playing through all those different stations is just it would be hard to say that that's something playing across the radio okay um we had one of our one of our members actually got involuntarily channeled there did not ask for that to happen and it freaked him out bad enough that he has now quit really so what exactly do you think is happening at the stone line in I, uh, me personally, and I think it was probably the same with the rest of the group, I think that the spirits that are there are upset because Miss Luker, I love her to death, but it seems like she's making a living off of their being miserable. And when we were there, a guy had said that he got drunk and went on a drunken ghost hunt that night his camera and she has mock headstones outside they're screw ups from the the place that makes headstones and he was out there cussing at the headstones and I don't agree with that but I can't do anything about it but that was pretty much our assumption the other the other member of my team Matt he said that the entire night he just felt like there was someone in his face really like he was gonna like you're in a group of guys about to get jumped. Do you think that the spirits are the, um, I believe the one that was said on the internet was the family's daughter. Her name was Irene. Yeah, Miss Luker thought for a long time it was Augusta. Yes, yeah, I've the, seen that. The TAPS team actually found out that Augusta grew up and got married. Lived. But there was a daughter of the Howell family that did die in her. Well, her name didn't show up on some kind of a form the year, a certain year after. Oh, okay. But they still don't know what her name is. Oh, okay. I thought maybe I have heard it was Irene, but they're not sure. Do you think that she is there? I have no doubt. Okay. I think that she finds the top floor as her refuge floor, since nobody else goes in the room except for on Sundays. People say the Stone Lion Inn is haunted for a variety of reasons. One of the main reasons listed is doors opening and closing by themselves. In our investigation of the house, we found that doors were hung improperly. We also discovered that these doors will close with just merely a touch or even by themselves. This provides an alternative explanation instead of ghosts. People also claim to hear unexplained noises in the Stone Lion Inn. Again, I think this is probably due to the fact that it is old. The house has a bunch of heating and air ducts, and this can lead to unexplained noises throughout the house. This provides an alternative explanation instead of ghosts. The most pervasive and perhaps most intriguing claim is that people see figures at the Stone Lion Inn. While there is not a mysterious figure walking around, we believe that the house primed people to see these things. In the room where people claim to be touched on the face the most, or messed with them somewhere on their head, there are hats decorating the entire room. The house used to be a mortuary, and the table used for embalming is still present there. This table is original to the house. When I bought the stone lion, it was just a private home. And uh, the previous owners had this table back in the kitchen, and they were using it as a buffet. And on the day of closing, I'm walking through the house, and all the furniture had been auctioned off, but this table was still in the kitchen. And I asked the previous owners, uh, weren't they going to take the table? And they said, no, they were just going to leave it for me. They knew that I had admired it, and they really wanted me to have it. And I said, oh, thank you so much. I just love this table. And Mrs. Walker, uh, she was such a sweet little gray-haired little crinkly lady, and she said, well, Sugar, I sure hope you enjoy that table. I really have. We want you to have it. And I said, well, I just love this table, Mrs. Walker. Thank you. Is it a baker's table? And she looked at me, and she said, well, it certainly could be. She knew damn well this was an embalming table. This used to be Smith's funeral home in the 1920s for about eight years. This was um, a mortuary. The Smith family uh, moved in here when the Houghtons went to Enid for a while, and they opened this as a mortuary. And um, the Smith family lived upstairs, and the embalming was done back in the kitchen where Michelle prepares the food nowadays. When we found out it was an embalming table, months later after we'd lived in the house, I was then to find out it had been a mortuary. We moved it out here in the hallway and we used it in the evenings as a bar. Um, our guests fix themselves drinks on this table. And I think that's appropriate. It's under the form of pickling. They're doing preservatives. The house is also not 
been changed in the past hundred years and it looks as if it is a haunted house. We believe that all of these figures that are claimed to be seen are due from the fact that the people who are probably going there already believe in ghosts and expect to find one. This could very easily lead someone to believe that something paranormal is there just because the house is old and it was haunted and has been run by dead people for a hundred or so years. Now we're not saying that there aren't ghosts present at the stone line in. There might be. We're saying that we didn't find any evidence to suggest that there are. Being the skeptics that we are, we've tried to keep an open mind and we went in trying to look for objective evidence to back up these very extraordinary claims. And the truth is, the stone line in just fell short.